Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World for part 10 of the Ravenport walkthrough for beginners. So as I said in the previous episode, you've got all the information need you need to run your farm at this point. I'm sure you're all doing well, making plenty of money, building up, buying new equipment, whatever you find fun in the game. Pursue it. That's what the game is about, making your own fun. So again, I'm moving on a few more episodes coming up, but this one is going to be focused on different farming options you have available to you, such as silage and the biogas plant. Now, neither one of these topics is particularly covered by giants in any of their tutorials, so I'm going to cover the basics of it here. I am going to point you to a bunch of my tutorial videos that I've already made previously uh, regarding a lot of these topics. So hopefully you'll go out and watch those and get even more information that you just might need. Now, I've already set up some equipment. I've got it all taken care of, and I'm going to show you where to find it and what it does. And I also have this. Now, keep in mind, this is all just for informational purposes. At this point, I'm not setting up how I would set up my farm. I would not put this bunker silo here but it was the only place I had room <laughs> on this small starting area at the moment. At least the only place I could find room quickly. So, and it makes it easy. It's a nice convenient location to show you what I want to show you today. The first thing is, now I have this cornfield all set up, ready to harvest, and this does not even need to be ready to harvest for this. You can harvest this or chop it as we'll find out here in just a minute, when it's in its green growing state. This one just happens to be ready to harvest. So what have I got here? Well, this is a bunker silo, and bunker silos are used to make silage. Silage is a compacted, compressed, and it's almost like a type of compost where the enzymes come in, they break it down, and what it makes is a highly nutritious cattle feed. So if you ever plan on having cattle, you'll definitely want to know how to make silage. And I have a whole series on silage, how to make silage, what makes the best silage. It's four or five different videos that you can go check out about making silage and the different ways you can make silage. Today we're just gonna look at some of the, the basics. Now, one way that you can make silage is by chopping corn. And the reason people like to chop corn to make silage is it makes a lot of silage. You won't get more silage than you will by chopping corn. But there are other ways to do it. What do we need? Well, we need this big beauty. This is called a forage harvester. If we go into our shop, we have a category just for these forage harvesters. Under vehicles, right here. And I just picked up the small Rostel mash and it's leased. I haven't purchased this. These are very expensive pieces of equipment. But if you're doing cattle, you're doing a big cattle operation, you're going to get a lot of use out of one of these. We also need a forage harvester header. It's our third category of headers. We've already looked at headers, corn headers. Now we've got forage harvester headers. And these come in different varieties for different reasons. And I do have a whole video on forage harvester headers and what they're good for. So you might want to check that out. They can do a lot of different things. I picked up a small corn chopper, a corn header. And that's what we'll be using today. Now, the tricky part about forage harvesters is not operating them or how expensive they are. It's finding a trailer that will hook up to them. <laughs> this caused me no end of frustration. When I was a, a new player trying to sort it out and it just so happens that I have a very popular bit video on forage harvester trailers that you should check out to find out what trailers you can use with your forage harvesters. The small 22,000 liter agri liners work really well and you can chain these so you could run two of these in tandem and it would fill both of them. Today I've just got the one. I'm not going to do this whole cornfield because frankly I don't need that much. I'm really just showing you what's going on. So with that said, we get into our forage harvester. We're going to 
put the pipe out like so by hitting O just like on any other harvester and we're going to make sure we've got our header selected and unfold it just like any other harvester turn that bad boy on and set it down and we're just going down this field just like any other harvester but you can see instead of harvesting corn it's chopping these plants into little tiny bits and what it's putting in the trailer is called chaff and chaff is what you need to make silage and you can see I mean I'm not even halfway down this field I've already got 6,000 liters so like I said this is going to make a lot of silage even our small field and I know this is much bigger than we started with but even this smallish field right here is going to net you a huge bounty of chaff if you want to make a lot of silage I have seen people make ridiculous amounts of silage in the millions of liters and we're going to discuss that too toward the end of this video something else that Giants doesn't tell you about okay so at this point I'm just going to go ahead and shut down I did one full row 13,000 liters of chaff now I'm going to bring this chaff over and I am going to dump it in my bunker silo assuming I can drive into that bunker silo there we go so once I'm between these two walls I have to hit hold control and hit I to unload here I have to make sure the trailer is selected and then I have to hit control I now a bunker silo will not indicate when it's ready for you to tip in like a regular silo would so you have to force it with unload here it's using control I okay so I've got a little bit of chaff in there not a whole ton but enough to uh, to get me started now one other way that you can get chaff and is very very popular well I have got a mower on the front of my tractor if we go into our shop in our tools menu we have a whole category set just for mowers this is a Pottinger 301 ED front mower there are side mowers there's a bunch of well there's a few different kinds of mowers that you can use I like the front mowers that mowers they just keep it straight and you can combine this with these are called butterfly mowers so you put this on the front you put this on the back and you get a nice wide swath of grass but for this example I really only need this small mower so just like any other piece of equipment I'm going to unfold it turn it on drop it down and as I go along you can see it's mowing that grass and that's one of the reasons that we uh, we put a lot of grass in when we did the landscaping earlier during this and even just little bits of grass like this I'm just gonna go down and back just very very quickly it even mows in reverse <laughs> So, whatever you want to do. So all of this mown grass, of course, we need to have a way to pick it up. And you'll remember that we installed the milling machine. And the milling machines are actually pretty cheap. They're only about $5,000. So I went ahead and bought one. What I'm going to do at this point... I'll go ahead and shut this mower down. And... I'll drop it off over here. I'm going to go get rid of this weight. Now, the mowers aren't so heavy. You need a weight on the back of your tractor to counterbalance. But it was just a good place to store it for a while. So anyway, what I'm going to do... I'm going to go get my milling machine. Right over here. And 
I don't have so much grass that I need that bigger trailer, but I'm going to go ahead and use it anyway since it's already over there. Start unfolding my milling machine, getting it ready to work. You can see the minute I pull up it, it recognizes that trailer and is ready to go. Okay. So I've got my milling machine turned on. Drop it down. And it will start picking up and collecting all of this grass for me. And it's actually doing a nice job of just collecting both of these rows. And we can just truck right along here. Now you'll notice that grass is not going to make as much chaff but it's a good source the nice thing about grass is it grows back on its own the difference with corn is you have to plow after every harvest that's one of the downsides of corn and then you have to replant refertilize the whole nine yards so grass is a much cheaper alternative than corn when you're making chaff it just doesn't produce quite as much so we'll shut down our milling machine, and I have got, I don't know, 4,500 liters of grass, and I can bring that right into my bunker silo also. Like so. And control I. Make sure my trailer is active. Control I to unload here. And the minute I start dumping this grass into the bunker silo, it turns that grass into chaff. So grass has officially become chaff. Drop that trailer. Go ahead and drop off the milling machine. Now the only other thing that you have to do to create silage is compact it. And you compact it like so. Now if you look at the control menus, when you pull up to your bunker silo, at the bottom of the controls menu you'll see fill level, chaff, and compacting. So we have 18,000 liters of chaff and it's already been compacted by 37 percent because I drove over it a couple times. So all I've got to do to compact it is just start driving my tractor forward and back. Look at that, we're at 50 percent already. Now the more chaff you have packed in here, the more times you'll have to go over it the longer it's going to take to compact it, but we've got such a small amount that this is just going to take seconds, literally. And each time I go over it, you'll see it increase in percentage, like so. There we go. So our, our, our chaff is now compacted 100%, and when you walk up to it, you're going to have a new command under the R key called Blanket Silo. When we do that, it puts a plastic blanket over the silo to keep the air out and this is actually something that happens in real life. The silage making process in a bunker silo like this is actually very much identical to what would happen in a real life dairy farm. In fact, I've watched 10th generation dairymen. It's a YouTube channel. Very interesting if you're, you know, into watching farming, real farming videos and watch them do a whole chaff harvest making silage and it wasn't really any different than what we do in the game so with that said at this point it's just a waiting game so i'm going to start advancing time right now it's 11:30 in the morning and we'll see when i guess i should stop for a second and say if you look at your controls it will tell you how far along your fermenting is so right now we're at 30% fermented, and we're looking for 100%. So I'm going to advance time. And there we go. Took about eight hours to ferment that little bit. Now I believe that the more that's in here, the longer it takes. But once you have fermented your silage, it says 100%. Now you have the command to open the silo. We come in here and hit R, take the blanket off, and the chaff has now turned into silage, this dark brown. 
So once again, we would grab our tractor and our milling machine because milling machine is going to be great to pick this silage right back up out of here. And don't worry that it's only partially unblanketed because as you pick up the silage, see how it, it starts to unblanket the rest of it? So the more we get out of here, the farther along that blanket will go. And in this instance, it's almost completely off. There's just a little tiny bit left back there. Now it's all gone. So we had about 18,000 liters of silage, pretty painless to make, and we probably have a, I don't know, 100,000 liters if we did all of that corn, probably more than that, and then we've got all the grass around the farm that we could have done that with also. Okay, so I've got 18, exactly 18,000 liters of silage. What do I do with it? Well. One thing you can do, you can store it in your silo, multi-fruit silo, to feed your cattle. But, the other thing that you can do with it, and what a lot of people do with it, is take it to the biogas plant. What's a biogas plant, you might ask? Well, that's a great question, because Giants never tells you anything about biogas plants and what they're good for. And I'll be honest with you, if I hadn't been watching YouTube videos myself, I might never have sorted it out. It didn't make any sense to me to have to buy a biogas plant, and that's exactly what you have to do. And let's take a look at the map real quick. Right here, kind of in the middle, we have the biogas plant. If we look at our lands, on a beginner's map, the map you're supposed to start with, Giants wants you to pay three quarters of a million dollars to buy this land. Because the only way to use the biogas plant is to own the property that it's on. So effectively, Giants expects you to not only be a farmer, they expect you to be a biogas executive. <laughs> and it's not quite that dramatic, but... A lot of map makers have gotten very reasonable about the biogas plants and making them have a reasonable cost. I don't agree that you should have to buy that because effectively what you're doing is opening up a new sell point. And it's a place that you can sell your silage. So we're going to run up to the biogas plant. I'm going to show you exactly what it's all about. And one other alternative that you can use to make some money for your farm on grass that you would normally just cut and turn into hay or, you know, whatever. Now there are me other methods of making silage that you can use. Um, one is to bale wrap. So if you cut grass and make just straight grass bales and then bring a wrapper in, you know, if you'll recall back to uh, the grass work video, one thing that we did is we cut that grass and then we tetted it and turned it into hay. Well, instead of turning it into hay, you could just bale it into grass bales and then you would use a bale wrapper, which I will show you right now if you go into your baling technology. This thing right here is a bale wrapper. You uh, attach this to your tractor, unfold it, turn it on, you pull up to a bale, it grabs it and wraps it in plastic wrap and that turns the bale of grass into a silage bale. So that bale is the same as what we have in this trailer. That's also covered in my silage series of videos. So this is our biogas plant. This is what they're talking about.
And what the bio blah, 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 blah. <laughs> what the biogas plant can do for you? Well, I'm going to have to buy this in order to show you. And I'll tell you, I'm not going to work myself all the way up to $800,000. So I do have a mod that will allow me to add some money. I only use this when I need it. I don't use it in my Let's Plays. But with that said, if I go back to lands, I can now buy this land with the biogas plant on it. Now if I look in my prices menu, now all of a sudden I've got a sale point called biogas plant. And if I scroll across, this icon right here is for silage. Now, the barn says it will buy silage, but it will only buy silage bales. The biogas plant will buy loose silage at $600 a liter. That's not bad considering um, the amount that we're getting, especially for the corn. Yep, not bad at all. And the grass, I mean, $600 per 1,000 liters for grass is just pretty amazing. Now, the other thing that the biogas plant gives you, it gives you massive, massive bunker silos. So these concrete walls right here, these are also bunker silos. And you can see as I pull into them, the uh, fill level for chaff and compacting percentages show up. Now, when you're at the biogas plant, and I've got a setting turned off here, Interactive zone marker should be turned on. Biogas plants are different depending on the map that you're on. This particular biogas plant, this is the sale point for silage. There's one tricky little part of this, however. Oh. It does have a tip end point, so we're okay. So if I start tipping my silage here, there's usually a digital readout, and you can see that going up as I tip in my silage, and usually these max at 50,000 liters. So you can only tip in 50,000 liters at a time, and that's perfectly fine, simply because the biogas plant needs time to process whatever you give it. And so once you tip in 50,000, it won't accept any more until it's had time to process what you've given it. Now, as you noticed, I didn't get paid for selling that silage. Well, I didn't get paid immediately. But biogas plant plants, for some reason, pay out at midnight. So any silage that I just sold will pay me once midnight rolls around. Now the other thing that biogas plants do for you, they provide you with a form of fertilizer known as digestate. As that silage processes, one of the byproducts is digestate. And it requires a special tanker with a sprayer on the back of it or a drag hose and this nozzle right here you can bring that tanker underneath this and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about if we look at slurry tanks in our tools menu this is the type of tank that you would need to utilize this digestate and it's got a special thing on the back that allows it to spray this on your field so you can come up here fill this with digestate take it back to your field and fertilize your field with this. So you do get that added benefit. So that is what the biogas plants are for. You can make a lot of very good money by selling silage to the biogas plant and grabbing that digestate to use for fertilizer. Now keep in mind that digestate does not go as far as say a chemical fertilizer would or a liquid fertilizer it's not concentrated the way chemical fertilizers are. But it's free. Actually, you get paid to make it. 
So that's an added benefit. And just as, as an example, and it's not exact figures, but say if I used 1,000 liters of chemical fertilizer, I would probably need nine or 10,000 liters of digestate to cover the same area. But the difference is, it's free. And we know normally fertilizer is very expensive. Now I have given you the uh, fertilizer point for your farm and I didn't realize it at the time. I don't know that I would have used it for a beginner's course if I had, but it's got some major discounts on fertilizer. I mean, fertilizer is outrageously cheap on that particular mod. Yeah, I mean, use it if you want to. I don't have a problem using it, um, but realistically, fertilizer is not normally that cheap, so it's up to you. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Just a little additional information to add to your Farming Simulator gameplay at this point. I am going to cover a couple more topics in future episodes, but I do, do hope you found this informational, educational, entertaining, or otherwise. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. And I would like to say thank you to everyone who has, re has left so many positive comments about this walkthrough series. It's great to hear that it's been helping so many people get started in Farming Simulator. With that said, thanks again for coming along for the ride. And until next time, take care.